New Year and welcome to the January 4th meeting of the Thousand Oaks Youth Commission. We will now have the Pledge of Allegiance led by Commissioner Sclavonites. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we'll have roll call led by Francine Spriegel. Happy New Year, everyone. Commissioner Boyajian? Here. Commissioner Bernardello? Here. Commissioner Brousseau is absent. Commissioner Kohab? Here. Commissioner Lee? Here. Commissioner Leone? Here. Commissioner George McGuigan? Here. Commissioner Jeb McGuigan? Here. Commissioner Ramirez Davis is absent. Commissioner Rose? Here. Commissioner Sclavanites? Here. Commissioner Stein? Here. Commissioner Teodorescu? Here. Adult Commissioner Nobondian? Here. And Commissioner Petrus is absent. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we will have the public comments portion of our meeting led by Commissioner Lee. This is the time in our meeting when we invite members of the public to state their concerns about youth-related issues in our city or to present items for commission consideration. Are there any members of the public who would like to speak at this time? All right, with that being said, let's move on. Commissioner, or Chair Colehead. Thank you. Next, we'll have our guest speaker introduced by Commissioner Brugnardello. Thank you. And so tonight we have a guest speaker from Habitat from, Hum Habitat from Humanity. Mr. Felipe Flores was born and raised in Oxnard, California, and attended Santa Clara High School, graduating in the class of 87. He has a degree in architecture from the U Universidad Autónoma de Aguascalientes in Mexico. In his 20 years of work experience, he has worked in the specialty cement industry with a few architectural design firms as the HUD and construction inspector and is, in current, and, as, and is currently enjoying his most favorite position as the community impact coordinator for Habitat for Humanity. He has thoroughly enjoyed working for a nonprofit and says he may never go back to the commercial for profit business. So let's please welcome Mr. Felipe Flores. Thank you, and uh, thank you very much for the Youth Commission for inviting me um, for this presentation. <clears throat> very excited to be here. Um, about a month ago, close to a month ago, we were here uh, on another uh, similar topic on the on ways to give. So this is just a brief continuation of that, but more than anything, it, it's a brand new program that I'd like to talk to um, uh, to you young folks about. So it's a, an exciting opportunity for a lot of you at uh, Habitat for Humanity. So with that said, I'm going to uh, dig into the presentation here. Um, I will uh, show you some slides with some, info, with some information. And um, if anybody has questions at the end, I'd be more than happy to answer those for you. So uh, we're Habitat for Humanity of Ventura County. They, we used to be in the... El Rio section of um, Oxnard, which is on Lambert, but now we've moved to Rice Avenue. We've only been there for about a year and a half, and so a lot of people don't know that, but um, we're uh, on Rice Avenue between, uh, almost at the corner of Fifth Street, so we're between Fifth Street and Sturgis Avenue. Okay, and our website is www.habitatventura.org. So at Habitat for Humanity, uh, what we do is that we try to provide hope. Uh, currently, worldwide, there are 2 billion people that live in poverty housing. And here in the United States, more than 5.1 million American families pay more than 50% of their income for housing needs. So the rest goes to groceries, utilities, uh, a variety of expenses, but more than half goes to housing. And that's just, that's a lot of money. So we're trying to help these folks out and, and trying to help the cause and uh, provide hope to have a better shelter and to end the certain despair when it comes to homelessness. Also, in providing hope, uh, we've also noticed that uh, the number of affordable rental units is shrinking and a lot of people don't qualify for many of the grants or financial assistance that's available. So it makes it even more difficult for people to acquire a home. 
Uh, originally, Habitat for Humanity uh, was founded back in 1976 in America's Georgia, which is the suburb of Atlanta. There are uh, 2,300 affiliates worldwide working in all 50 states and including uh, Puerto Rico and in Guam. And Habitat for Humanity International has built over 300,000 homes and we've, we've been providing shelter for over a million people and counting. Our mission, it's basic and simple, it's to eliminate substandard housing and make affordable shelter a matter of conscience and action uh, throughout Ventura County. Um, our affiliate, our local affiliate here in Ventura County, it's uh, locally run and we also were um, part of Habitat for Humanity International. The organization itself was founded by Virgil and, Nil and Lynn Nelson uh, back in 1983 and we're, we're very proud to say that uh, our affiliate here is the oldest and thus the original here in California. There's Habitat for Humanity Greater Los Angeles, there's Habitat for Humanity Inland Empire uh, in San Francisco, et cetera. But here in California, Ventura County, we were the very first. And we're very proud of that. And our affiliate, we have built more than 55 homes for families here in Oakview, Camarillo, Thousand Oaks, Oxnard, and Simi Valley. And we have rehabbed over 500 homes in that span since 1983 till now. So we're out there and we're trying to make a difference amongst as many lives as we can. So I'm pretty sure that um, most of you uh, are aware of how Habitat works. We, we build homes and we sell them to low to very low income families. And these families go through a rigorous process where we have to check residency, we have to check credit, and there's a series of other requirements that they have to go through in order to be able to qualify to be able to purchase the home. So in doing that, sometimes we don't help as many people as we'd like. We serve anywhere from between two to four families on a yearly basis, and we'd like to help more. So what we're doing now is that we're starting to do some, well, we have started about four or five months ago with this program called Preserve a Home, where if we can't, if we're not able to sell you one of our low, um, uh, one of our uh, homes to low income, to a low income family, what we're doing is that we're reaching to current homeowners where their homes need help. So if they need, um, let's say, some landscape work or some paint or simple exterior work like that, we'll, we're able to help them. And by doing this, we're able to help more families than those that are just able to purchase the home, uh, which are like the two to four families a year. So. Um, that's a little bit of the of the history behind this. When the affiliate first started back in 1983, they the affiliate started doing rehab work, and they sort of got away from that, and then they started building uh, homes from the ground up, which is what they've been doing ever since. But due to the economy, um, difficult situations for everybody, and how things have been working out, is we're getting back into home rehab and repair. So. Uh, for that, we have the Preserve a Home program. This program was started originally back in 1999, uh, and it's part of the Neighborhood Revitalization Program, which was created by Pat Lund back in 1999. We have the full support of Valspar, uh, the Valspar Corporation, which I'm sure everybody's aware of. They're the paint manufacturer for Lowe's. Great paint, not a plug, great paint. <laughs> Uh, and the program was originally implemented by the Twin Cities um, Habitat of uh, Minneapolis. The goals, as I was mentioning, uh, is to pursue Habitat's strategic mission of providing families with a clean, safe, and affordable place to live. So, like I mentioned before, if we can't sell you one, well, then maybe we can help you uh, spruce up the one you have and give it a little bit of TLC and, and um, make it better for the family. We're also trying to improve neighborhoods. We're trying to reinvig reinvigorate these. Uh, sometimes there are neighborhoods that are affected by abandonment, there are foreclosures, there's blight, uh, there's uh, dirty areas that need to be cleaned up. So we're trying to get rid of these eyesore, these eyesores as well and, and um, make the neighborhood nicer. As we continue with the advantages, uh, as stated before, uh, we serve more families. The project timeline is also a lot shorter, so 
when you volunteer on one of our sites, the house construction goes on anywhere from, uh, it'll range to six, seven, maybe nine months. With the Preserver Home Program, we gather, we gather a group of volunteers, we go in, do the work, and we're there in two or three days. So the turnaround time is a lot quicker and the results are dramatic. With this program, it, what this also does is that it allows us to partner with a government and municipal entities so they're aware of what we do and so they bring us or, or let us know of, of additional or potential clients that could use the services so that we could better the neighborhood and, or the city and uh, make this uh, the program grow. And we also have the opportunity to partner with uh, other other um, groups and communities to come to curb the degradation of neighborhoods. So, <clears throat> the value of Preserver Home. What we want to do is to touch upon as many families as we can and help them out and make them feel happy and safe in their homes. And it also it's it, it expands the re revitalization. Um, and on the neighborhood level, and it just it goes beyond the new home. So we, we remodel, we rehab the homes, and we turn these around and make for a new place to live. So we work with other community organizations, and also what's really neat is that individual organizations can sponsor a project. We completed a, we call them brush projects because that's the first phase of the program that I'll get into shortly. But um, we had the students from uh, Cal Lutheran sponsor a brush project here in Thousand Oaks in October. And that was a really nice project. Um, I'll show you a picture of that briefly. But uh, it's, it, could, it could be an individual, it could be a group, it could be a group of volunteers, it doesn't matter. There's an opportunity for everybody to, to work hard and to see the fruits of your labor. So it, it's really nice. And it, uh, this program also uh, gives us the opportunity to expand our volunteer base, uh, and there's really no need for um, construction skills. So it doesn't matter if, if you could pick up a paintbrush, if you uh, can grab a sander, then that's all you need. Okay. The, what we've noticed in the past year or so, uh, since the program's been developed and uh, put into action, the, there is an interest in doing this type of work and continuing uh, the rehabbing, um, remodeling, uh, sprucing up homes. And it's an, as an interesting fact, more than 50% of the voicemails that we get at the office, uh, more than 50% of these, they're asking about a home rehab program. We will get calls about, um, well, you know, my roof is leaking. Can you come help me? Um, I need a paint job because my home hasn't been painted in 20 years. So everybody's asking about it, and we're, we're, we've got the program off the ground uh, four months ago, and we're trying to make it grow. So with the the quick history that I just breezed by, um, we have the program basics for uh, the Preserver Home Initiative. So the first one is called A Brush With Kindness. The second one is called Minor Repairs. And the last one is called Major or Critical Repairs. And I'll describe these, um, how each of these works. In A Brush With Kindness, the scope of work, well, in, in each of the three um, uh, sections or, or components, the work is limited to certain aspects. So a brush with kindness, as you can see, it says that uh, we cover costs up to $5,000 per home. Uh, for minor repairs, you, the costs that we cover are, are anywhere between five to 15000 and then for major or critical repairs, we go from fifteen dollars to $25,000 per home. So what this means is that if you have um, a roof that's leaking, uh, the garage door is busted, and your driveway is all shot, well then it's, we're not going to be able to put it into the Brush With Kindness, which is the first component that we're currently um, developing. Obviously the cost would be greater, so we would be looking at something along the lines of major to critical repair. So in looking for sponsorships and looking for donations, these are the budget numbers that we handle uh, for each one of the components. Currently. We're just working on a brush with kindness. Uh, later on this year, sometime during the summer, we're going to start with minor repairs, which is a little bit more involved. 
and hopefully in the fall or about a year from now we'll be getting into the major or critical repair component of the program so for now it's just we're doing a brush with kindness work and I'll, and I'll um, let you know what these what the characteristics are so for a brush with kindness all we're doing is simple exterior work we are scraping we are sanding caulking we prime and we paint if there's window repair where we need to uh, seal windows around um, window sills or window frames we will do that and if there's my if there's minor siding or trim repair we will do that um, landscape work and then we also do cleanup and brush and junk removal okay this is from the this photo is from the thousand oaks home that was completed back in october so brush with kindness and that's basically all it all it is it's landscape work and paint for minor repair the work is a little bit more extensive uh, what this is is that uh, we will replace doors and windows if there are weatherization issues, we will take care of those. And if there are any uh, health and safety issues, we will address those also. And if there's a need to apply insulation, if the home is cold in the, uh, the winter, if it's too hot in the summer, then we take a look at that. And if additional insulation is needed, we could, we could install that. And then finally, uh, the major or the critical repair component, um, if there's extensive siding uh, and trim repair, we will do that. Uh, we will change out the roof. We need to change out floors. If there is wall, full wall replacement, we can will be able to do that. And in this component is where we would do porch or wheelchair ramp construction. So, if there's a person in a, in a wheelchair that um, needs access to his home, or if his bathroom isn't uh, wheelchair accessible, we can expand the bathroom, install grab bars, safety bars, and showers, etc. So. But for this, this, as you can see, this is a lot more involved than the current component that we're at, which is a brush with kindness. So in a brush with kindness, which is what we're currently developing or working on, <clears throat> when we do family selection, we look at the homes, we receive the pre-applications, we make sure that they're within the uh, recommended um, averages for the Ventura County median, and we also allow um, the work to be done on whoever has the greatest need and also uh, we give priority priority to seniors <clears throat> also the the home must be owner occupied so if uh, there is someone that's the homeowner but he's renting it out then that person wouldn't qualify the homeowner also has to be low to very low income and also that's another another key aspect is that the homeowner has to be willing to partner with habitat and what this means is that e even if we go in there with the volunteers they must perform uh, at least 10 hours of sweat equity but again if the person is has uh, mobility problems if they're sick then we understand that but if they can act as a side host to greet volunteers uh, and work with them uh, as as much as they can, then that's fine. But what we want to see is that they have a vested interest also in upgrading their home. So in provide refreshments. So that's another way they could help us out. They could work with the volunteers, like I just mentioned. Then they could assist in cleanup. And they could also help us with our staff when we get in there and stage and prepare the house for the workday. They can also work on other sites, and they can also invite family and friends to participate. So it, it, it's also a process in which we are trying to uh, instill a pride in home ownership and, and make them aware and, and have a love of their home again and not let it go um, by the wayside. So here's some quick pictures that uh, we have of uh, the A Brush With Kindness program and we we're so familiar with it with the uh, term that we just say ABWK <clears throat> but all it means is a brush with kindness so this is a home in Piru uh, this is before and this is after this was done with uh, volunteers from Christian Church of Thousand Oaks uh, there was another group from Intuit um, computing uh, thousand oaks also and they did a fantastic job it came out really nice and 
it, oddly enough, as a, just a quick side note, when we did the work, this was on the 4th of July weekend, and it appeared to be the hottest weekend of the summer. It was literally like 105, 110. And then the week, next weekend, it was a lot cooler, so who knows why we got the, the bad well and the hot weather, but uh, nonetheless, those results were beautiful. This is before a brush with kindness. This is a home in Fillmore. And as you can see, there's the homeowner needed a lot of help. The homeowner and her mom have mobility issues. Um, the 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 daughter struggles with uh, with a home with um, not home based business. I'm sorry, with a um, a mail business. But nonetheless, they asked for our help. We evaluated, and so we went in there. And these are the results. This was achieved in three days. So it's really neat because you, you get in there with a crew of volunteers. Um, everybody's got the will, everybody's got the desire. And once you start working and then you start scraping and then you, once you start getting all the, the old material out and then you start pulling up the weeds and then you start placing your finishes, you start priming and then you start applying color and then the pavers and you see how everything just transforms within a matter of hours. So it's a really rewarding experience and if um, any of you have the opportunity to do so, I would invite you to sign up and, and come join us on one of our sites because it's, it's, it's fantastic. This is another Brush With Kindness home. This was done in Thousand Oaks. This is the one I was mentioning that uh, was completed in October. This is before and that's afterwards. So we did paint, we did uh, gutter, we cleaned out some gutters, we trimmed the hedges, uh, a lot of cleanup, and also another, the home came out just beautiful. And <clears throat> that's the program in a nutshell. Um, I could sit here and, and tell you guys of lots of wonderful stories, a lot of wonderful opportunities, uh, but more than anything, I, I'm here to let you know that this program is out there. It's a fantastic way of giving. And for more information, uh, Habitat, www.habitatventura.org or 805-485-6065, office number, give us a call. Thank you so much, Mr. Flores. Uh, I, that was a great presentation. I know we all learned a lot. Um, is, are there any questions? Uh, yes. I just have a couple. Um, I was just wondering, besides um, money donations, um, does Habitat for Humanity also accept donations of materials um, like paint or hammers or anything of that kind? Yes, we do. We have a restore there at uh, our Rice Avenue location, and any materials that you have that are in good condition, uh, we will take. So any material, if you have a half open box of mails, if you have um, uh, plywood, two by fours, um, we will take anything. Slightly used tools, we will take those. And is there a certain time that um, people need to come and volunteer or a certain day that you um, do the repairs? Is it on weekends most of the time or does it just, just depend? It's usually on weekends. We run from Thursday to Saturday and currently we're confirming the dates for the next two homes. Uh, these will be in March, so if you go online, you'll see on the calendar, and I think um, they might already be there. So it's um, two weekends in March, two of the homes. Thank you. Thank you. Go ahead. Are the If a family qualifies, are the repairs, like the minor repairs, free of charge for the family and their house? No, that's, and that's a very good question. What happens is that uh, they will qualify for a loan but the loan is zero interest. So let's say that we take a look at the home and it's $10,000 worth of um, uh, materials. Since the labor is donated because everybody works on the home, we're only charging the family for the materials. So let's say it's $10,000, then we would sit down with the family and say, okay, well, this is the amount of um, materials, this is how much you owe us. We sit with them and then we work with them on a monthly payment that they could afford without breaking their budget. So if they say, well, I could do maybe 50 a month, than 50 it is until they're done. Zero interest and because all we're trying to do is reach out to the families, make them make the homes nice again and help them out. Um, is there a recommended age for a, a volunteer or is it any any age? We, 
habitat dictates that uh, we can go as young as 16, but we've had situations where we've had kids as young as 14, uh, but we've had uh, lots of adult supervision, and it's just for safety issues. So as young as 14, we will accept them on, on work sites. Are there any other questions? All right, well, thank you so much again for taking the time to come out and present to us. Um, and I, if everybody could take a look and see the information uh, for contacting Habitat, uh, if you guys have any other questions. Thank you so much. Thank and you. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. <clears throat> thank you. That was great. All right, next we have school and liaison reports uh, led by uh, Vice Chair Rose. Thank you, Chair Colehut. Um, we will now move on to item number 6A, um, that is the Teen Center Advisory Council. In addition to being an advisory body to City Council, the Youth Commission also appoints commissioners to act as liaisons to various youth organizations. One of those such organizations is the Teen Center um, Advisory Committee. And today we're going to have Commissioner Tia to rescue talk to us about the Teen Center Advisory. The Teen Center has hosted four large special events the month of December. In one week, 2,100 teens attended three of these events. Saturday, December 3rd was our annual high school battle of the bands. Six local bands were judged by industry professionals. 400 teens attended. The band Eyes on the Skyline won first place. This was an amazing event. Thursday, December 8th was our annual middle school spirit night done in cooperation with CVUSD. All five public middle schools competed for the title of spirit night champion. Activities included competitions and decorations, cheer, rally races, and tug of war. Sequoia Middle School won the overall spirit championship award by winning the most categories. This was another great event with great energy attended by 1,000 teens. Next, we hosted a holiday dance for 7th and 8th graders on Saturday, December 10th. This program featured a snow machine, video and light show, and text live. 700 teens attended. Then to wrap up the year, we hosted our annual community-wide New Year's Eve celebration this past Saturday, December 31st. This program is designed for 7th and 8th grade students, and we receive a lot of community support. The Thousand Oaks Auto Mall Association contributed $1,000 for the 22nd year in a row. They have been a huge supporters of this program. The new Thousand Oaks Sunrise Rotary gave $400, Chappelle Industries Incorporated gave $300, and the Tire Man gave $100. All of this equals $1,800, which helped the offset many costs related to the program. We also received $3,853 of merchandise, which was used as prizes and giveaways. This program was tons of fun. Photos from all of these programs can be viewed at the Teen Center Facebook and on our website at www.thousandoaksteencenter.com. Two activities that took place over the winter break that staff wanted to share were on Wednesday, uh, d December 21st, Youth Outreach hosted a barbecue at the Teen Center for 35 area housing teens. This program included sports and games and was enjoyed by all. Then on Wednesday, December 28th, the, uh, the Teen Center partnered with the City of Agora Hills to provide a snowboard trip to Mountain High. 34 teens went on the trip. As, as for upcoming activities, first up is winter registration for all the winter programs. We're currently taking registration for all activities. This includes sports programs such as high school dodgeball, high school boys basketball league, fencing, and middle school boys basketball. We also offer a girls volleyball class and Saturday morning girls volleyball league. Some of our other programs include anime club and class, mock SAT and ACT tests, be safe driving school, first aid and CPR workshops, jazz, tap, hip hop, and belly dancing. We also have guitar, drums, fashion, video production, drama, stained glass, and computer programs such as Photoshop, game making, and LAN party. Go to thousandoaksteencenter.com to find out more. We will also be hosting a 7th and 8th grade winter dance on Saturday, January 14th from 7 to 10. The cost will be $10 at the door. Also, don't forget the dodgeball tournament on Friday, January 27th from 6.30 to 9.30 p.m. We are conducting this event in cooperation with the Youth Commission and hope to have a great attendance as we did last year. Entry fee is only $5 and includes not only the tournament but a barbecue and a live performance from the band Alcove Children. This event is for high school teens only. Register at thousandoaksteencenter.com. And we also have an e-waste um, event coming up on um, Saturday, January 7th from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. And that's all from the Teen Center. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Tia de Rescue. Um, next, we will have Commissioner Leone introduce the ASB-ASG portion of our meeting. 
This is the portion of our meeting where we invite um, representatives from local middle and high schools to come talk about um, what's going on in their school, ASG and ASB. So if we can please have Hannah Santos from Wedwood come up. Thank you. Okay. Um, hi, I'm Hannah Santos from Redwood Middle School, and I'm going to tell you a little bit about the last two months. Um, today, our school held an inflatable party for all of the students who sold seven or more items in our school fundraiser. The entertainment included inflatable bouncers and obstacle courses. Tomorrow is our school spelling bee. Student representatives will be competing against each other to claim the title of spelling champ. Friday, January 13th, is our Braids and Shades Spirit Day. Students will be encouraged to wear sunglasses and or braids in their hair to show school spirit. January 27th is going to be our winter dance. The theme of this, uh, the theme of this upcoming event is Disney. Famous icons such as Sleeping Beauty's Castle and Mickey Mouse will be featured at this dance. Redwood Middle School 7th and 8th grade ASB students are currently partaking in a community service project called Pay It Forward. Ten groups of four to five students have been given $100 to put towards their project. Different projects include filling backpacks with items for homeless people in our community and making blankets to donate to uh, St. Jude's Children's Hospital. The project idea was featured in the Star newspaper on December 20th. Lastly, as mentioned earlier, on December 8th was the Teen Center Spirit Night, and Redwood Middle School won the Sportsmanship Award. Go Vikings! Thank you. Thank you, Hannah. That was very good. Um, can we have Allison Weisenfield and Ulysses Clavinides from Kalina Middle School? Hi, my name is Allison Weisenfeld, and I hope everyone had a great winter break this year. I would like to start out with Spirit Night. Though we did not win, we put in our best effort and had a lot of fun. We will win next time, so watch out. We had a Cody Pajama Day, which was a great success. Also, we finished our Mana Food Drive on the same day. Everyone in ASB was happy with the job that we did, and we felt great doing it. Remember, Kalina is an amazing school, so if you are considering our school for your child, there will be a Kalina Open House New Parent Meeting night on Thursday, January 12th for 6th, 7th, and 8th graders. Next, the fashion show is coming up at Kalina. This is one of our biggest events when students walk down the runway in the latest trends. There will also be auctions for various items. Last year, there was an iPad, a new phone, and many more great items. Last year was amazing, and this year will be even better. Finally, the next Cody will be in January. It'll be the 20th. It is Crazy Hair and Clash Day, so find your wackiest outfit, and you might be chosen to be on the Cody Runway Show and even be the Cody King or Queen. Thank you. Good evening. My name is Lucy Clemenese, and I hope everybody had a great winter break. One of our great teachers, Miss White, has submitted a creative teacher idea to We Are Teachers. With your vote, she could win $200 along with many needed technology for a classroom. Please take a moment to vote for her for her. The link can be found on the net and it must be done either today or tomorrow because the because the deadline is January 5th. On November 12th, Kalina's debate team competed in the Golden State Debate League's first term of the year, held at La Lorena. Kalina is one of the only two public schools competing against many private schools in the league. At the tournament, Kalina earned third place for a team placement with three teams in the top 15. Two indivisible, spe indivisible speakers placed in the top ten. Con congratulations to all the participants and their coach, Miss Lamb. On Tuesday, minimum days, like next Tuesday, we would like to invite you all to wear college gear. Weezer is an actual shirt, sweatshirt, jersey, or pair of sweats from the college, or just the colors from your favorite college. Next Wednesday, the 11th, will be our annual spelling bee. If you'd like to sign up, please see the counseling office. 
The following day, Thursday, January 12th, will be open house night where parents of new students can come get information. Lastly, there will be no school on January 16th and 23rd. Thank you. Thank you very much for your report. Can I please have Katie Owens from Newbury Park High School come up? Hello and good evening. I hope you guys all had a happy holidays. Um, just a reminder, the school sense program is still going on. And for this month, January, we earned double points. So be sure to save all your movie code ticket stubs and all your mall receipts and turn them in at the school or at the kiosk center in the mall. Now, it's that time of year again, and Poetry Out Loud is coming to Newbury Park High School on January 12th at 7 p.m. in the library. This nationwide event is a competition where students memorize two qualifying separate pieces of poetry and recite them out loud where they can win many scholarships and prizes. Um, the NPHS Baseball Boosters are doing or is excited to announce a Tough Cat run on Saturday, February 11th. This run features both start and finish lines at our own uh, Newbury Park campus. There is a 10K run, a 5K mud run, and a family fun race. And all, all events are open to all ages. Um, and for enjoyment of spectators and racers alike, there is a health and fitness fair where exhibitors will be showcasing their merchandise and expertise on many different things. Um, for more information, you can go to www.toughcatrun.com um, to find out more information and register. Now, this event benefits NPHS Athletics, so be sure to hurry up and register. And lastly, our term ends January 20th, and the new semester begins with new classes. And as a semester break, we have the 23rd off. Thank you, and have a happy month. Thank you so much, Katie. Can we have Chris Pumford from Lorena High School come up, please? Hello, my name is Chris Pumford. I'm a senior at Lorena High School. I hope everybody had an amazing break. Um, today we had a guest speaker who spoke with us about the importance of being inclusive and accepting and to help and create a nourishing school environment. Um, next week we will be having a college financial aid workshop in the cafeteria at 7 p.m. All Lorena High School and non Lorena High School students are welcome to attend. If you're interested in attending, please email Mrs. LaBelle. Um, and that's going to be at uh, nlabelle at lorena.com. Lorena High School will be conducting our, f our first semester exams on the 17th, 18th, and 19th. Good luck to Regents and study hard. Our entrance placement tests will be held on January 21st from 8 to 12 for all prospective students. And on January 29th, the freshman class will be hosting father-daughter bowling from noon to 2 p.m. So tell your dads and be ready for a great night. Uh, January 30th to February 3rd, we will be celebrating Catholic Schools Week. So I hope everybody has an amazing January. Thank you so much, Chris. Um, now Elizabeth Pumford from Thousand Oaks High School. I hope you all had a happy new year. So we have a lot of excitement on campus right now. Uh, with the 2012 Senior Ball, which will be hosted at the Spanish Hills Country Club on January 8th. And it's going to run from 7 to 11 p.m. However, there is limited attendance, so we'll hurry to receive your, reserve your ticket before they run out. Also, interviews for outdoor school counselors are being conducted right now, so you can schedule your appointment in the Career Center. The Canary Recreation and Park District invites local high school students to enter the 50th Anniversary Logo Contest with a submission deadline of Friday, January 27th, so make sure that you start planning that now. Also, ASB is conducting a donation drive, and they're collecting anything from toys to books to balls, anything pretty much, and that's going to be in the second period classrooms. Meanwhile, items are being collected for the Agora Animal Shelter in room C10 to help for any animals in need. In other upcoming TO events, Students of the Month are invited to celebrate on January 30th from se or at 7 o'clock p.m. in the cafeteria. ASB is also hosting a, do or a blood drive on February 2nd, so make sure that your consent forms are in so that you can participate in that. 
Finally, future Lancer Night takes place on February 8th, but good luck to our current Lancers in their soccer and basketball games today. Thank you. Thank you very much, Elizabeth. Um, now, Arantxa Sanchez Cruz from Westlake High School. Can you please come up? Hi, good evening. My name is Arantxa Sanchez Cruz, and I'm from Westlake High School. Last month, we wrapped up an amazing football season, and we congratulate our team for doing such an amazing job. And this month, we are celebrating the World Language Department by giving them gifts to show our appreciation for all they do. We also had a successful blood drive last month, and we're planning for one later in the year. This week, we have dodgeball sign-ups, and the wigwam and the tournament will be next week. And also next week is our food drive, and on Friday the 13th, we're going to have a blackout lunch rally, and everyone's encouraged to wear black and earn spirit points, which can then turn into prom money. And with finals only a few, week, a few weeks away, we encourage our students to study and push this last stretch, and wrapping up for another great semester. So thank you for your time and Happy New Year. Thank you. Um, now Eric um, Elert from Conejo Valley High School. Good evening and Happy New Year to everyone. My name is Eric Ellert and I'm here tonight representing Canaveral Valley High School. December was a big month for outreach at Canaveral Valley High School. 53 students attended our field trip to the Los Angeles Rescue Mission as a part of Project Blanky, accompanied by Miss Dixie and Mr. King. We donated blankets, clothes, and toiletries. We also donated food to Mana and toys to the Action Toy Shop, both serving our local families. It's a new year, and everyone's now back to school after a well-needed break. We're ready to finish up the semester. Our big event this month is the annual talent show, which will be on January 9th. Our theme is talent on the, in the streets. We have seven acts sign up. Two guitarists, including me and myself, a drummer, a singer, a dancer, two people performing rhythmically assisted poetry, and a monologue act. Everyone will, will perform for their chance to receive one of three cash prizes. First place prize is $100, followed by $75 and $50. There will also be a surprise guest artist. Remember, the show will be during an, ex will be during an extended lunch period on Wednesday, January 11th. I said January 9th before, and I meant January 11th. Sorry about that. Canary Valley High School is a credit recovery school. We have 12 students that will be returning to their home comprehensive high schools. For those that choose to graduate from CVHS, we'll be giving a test to receive an additional 40 credits on January 26th. This test counts towards elective credits and is only valid for students graduating from Canary Valley High School. There will be a Renaissance Assembly for second quarter when the third quarter begins to honor attendance awards and students who achieve the honor of Renaissance. Renaissance requires 80% or better attendance, a C average or better in academic performance. Students are also required to have no suspensions this school year and earn at least 2.5 credits for each of their classes taken. That concludes my announcements for Canaveral High School. Thank you. Thank you, Eric. This concludes our ASB and ASG portion of our meeting. Um, we encourage all local, middle, and high schools to come and give a um, report for their school if you didn't come tonight. So thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Leone, Leone, and with that, I turn it back to Chair Cola. Thank you. All right, so our next portion of our meeting will be discussing the projects that the Youth Commission is currently undertaking. Our first project, the Youth Implementation and Summit, will be discussed by Commissioner Brugnardello. So I would just like to remind everybody to turn in Youth Summit applications. Uh, the Youth Summit will be on Saturday, February 25th, uh, starting at 8 a.m., uh, so if you have an application, please turn it in. You can, uh, I think you can fax it or uh, email it or uh, personally bring it in uh, on paper. So it's up to you. Uh, so now we will have youth implementation reports. So we'll start out with the Environment Committee. Um, <clears throat> excuse me. I am the Environment Chair this year, and uh, what we did at our last meeting was basically budget the entire uh, teen video festival that we are co-chairing with the recreation committee and um, we are starting to get that going and this is the application for the uh, uh, actually do that in the next report during the teen video festival report and so yeah that's what we did last week 
Thank you. Okay, so we will now have uh, the Recreation Committee. Hi, um, I'm the chair of the Recreation Committee. Like I, like Matt just said, um, we were working on budgeting the Team Video Festival last meeting, and like um, mentioned earlier, we are we have our dodgeball event on the 27th of this month from 6:30 to 9:30, and there'll be barbecue and a live performance from Alcove Children. So um, it's really fun. Bring your friends. We had a really good time last year, and it should be a great event. Thank you. That's it. Thank you so much. And then the volunteer committee. We are currently working on getting different um, organizations and services into the database. Um, so we have all the services needed for anyone that um, needs to come in and get information on what is going on in our city so we can finalize um, the report and present to city council. Thank you. Thank you. And last but not least, uh, bullying. Um, Okay, uh, so the survey is done, and so we'll be distributing um, that next implementation meeting on the uh, on the 11th uh, to our committee members acting as liaisons for five of the middle schools uh, throughout the community. Um, look for them in the week of uh, January 16th, um, and the survey will be uh, distributed to uh, one, six, seventh, and eighth grade class um, in each of the five middle schools. And um, we could really do with some more people. So um, if you're interested, uh, next meeting is, um, again, uh, J uh, January 11th. It's in the Marvin, uh, Marvin room in the Thousand Oaks Library. So thanks. All right, thank you so much for your guys' reports. And I wanted to remind all members of any of the youth implementation committees that, just like uh, Commissioner McGuigan said, uh, that the next meeting is January 11th, which is next Wednesday. So please come, and it is in a new location, which is the uh, Marvin Room. Smith, just kidding. Smith Room, community, Smith Community Room at the Thousand Oaks Library. Uh, so please come, and we look forward to seeing you there. Thank you. Thank you. All right, next we have the Native Networking Project, and that will also be discussed by Commissioner Brignardello. Hello again. Um, okay, so the Night of Networking is coming up soon. It will be held on Monday, January 23rd. Uh, so please RSVP. Uh, these uh, postcards have been distributed to all the schools. It is a event for juniors and seniors and then uh, college students who are below the age of 21. So if you're interested, you can RSVP to youthcommission at teoaks.org. Um, or yeah just email that number or you can rsvp to the facebook event that uh is titled night of networking and uh you can email one of the administrators and then we will for forward that information on to the appropriate people but just so you guys know uh some of the people uh, some of the businesses that will be there are uh, uh let's say Inv infi uh dole foods many mansions prospect mortgage sage publication santa barbara bank and trust uh, Kythera Biopharmaceuticals, Bio uh, Semtech, Strawtech Biomedical, Southern California Edison, THQ, Value Click, Masserich, Caneo uh, Recreation and Park District, and City of Thousand Oaks. So if you are interested, interested in any of those uh, career sectors, this would be a great opportunity for you to come and listen to the presentations, learn about those industries, and then have the opportunity to connect with those business professionals and possibly walk out of the room with an internship. So this is a great opportunity. Um, it's extremely beneficial, and I highly recommend that you uh, RSVP, and um, I hope to see you there. So thank you so much. All right, thank you. Next, uh, we have the Teen Video Festival report led by Mr. Matt, Commissioner Matt Stein. Sorry okay, uh, now we're ready for this report. Uh, this is the application for the Teen Video Festival. Um, as I showed last month, uh, we basically budgeted the entire thing last time and started. we're starting to really get this thing moving. And so if you have any questions about applying, you can either pick one up at your uh, school's office or you can do it online at toaks.org and find uh, the Youth Commission page and go through there and do it. If you have any other questions, you can call Pete Martinez at 809-804-5156 or e email him at pete at crpd.org.
Oh, yes. And we now have the official website put up by Commissioner Brousseau, and that is teenvideofestival.org. Conejo Teen Video Festival dot org. Please check that out and also like it on Facebook. Thank you. And Thank you. Uh, next, we have the Therapeutic Dance Project led by Commissioner Boyajan. The Therapeutic Dance is an event put on by the Thousand Oaks Youth Commission. This year, the theme is totally tropical, and the dance will be held on March 31st. We provide dinner, dance, decorations, a photo booth, balloon drop, and tons of fun. We encourage all of the attendees who come to be dressed up as a theme. Thank you. Thank you. Next, we have public information, and uh, Commissioner Ramirez Davis is not present tonight. However, I will um, summarize the things that he asked me to say for him. So first of all, we have a Facebook page. It's called uh, it's Youth Commission, Thousand Oaks Youth Commission. It's on Facebook. You search it in the bar. You can go there. You can like our page. If you like our page, we will love you forever and ever so please go like it we need more likes we're trying to get over 400 that's only 12 more likes all right so you can we can do it so if everyone in this room goes and likes it we'd really appreciate it and everyone that's watching if you guys can all like it too we also have an event page on that's connected to our actual youth commission uh, page that is the night of networking so you can go there you can get information about it as well as the flyer and you can choose to join there but remember that's not RSVPing you also need to call and email um, our staff person and uh, or email our youth commission at tox.org email yes anyways um, we also have we also will be having several announcements through the radio and hopefully in local newspapers but we are still working on that so thank you and now I will turn the meeting to myself and now as a uh, chair call up again um, we'll move on to the eighth portion of our meeting which is commissioner comments and will commissioner tear to rescue please lead this section of the meeting this is the last portion of our meeting where commissioners can provide any information comment or announcements which no action by the commission will be taken at this time are there any commissioner comments commissioner stein okay uh, so the teen center is having a boys basketball uh, league and you can sign up on Saturday, or season, excuse me, season begins Saturday, March 3rd, 2012. And there's mandatory um, player evaluations Saturday, January 4th, 2012, or January 25th, 2012. And so you can basically either sign up individually or by, or with a team of however many people you want. There's obviously five on the court at a time, so... You can know that work that out with your friends. It's a hundred dollars, so it's not per person. It's uh, it is it's a hundred dollars per person, and um, yeah, the games will be taken between are between nine and one p.m. or nine a.m. and one p.m. Excuse me, and you can like the teen center on Facebook to get more information, or you can call the teen center at eight zero five four nine four five one five six. Any more, um, Chair Rose or Vice Chair Rose? Sorry. Um, this is a little premature, but on February 10th, our advanced anatomy class at Westlake High School is going to be holding a talent show. So if you want to see me rap, um, I suggest you go there because it's going to be quite fun. And all the proceeds do go to our class um, to purchase cadavers for next year's students and, you know, for our miscellaneous needs like tools and stuff like that. So it'll be a lot of fun, and I do recommend you go February 10th. It's a Friday. Thank you, Vice Chair Rose. Any other comments? Oh, Chair Kohup. Uh, I'd just like to uh, say God bless the family of Sarah Galloway, who passed away recently. Uh, she was a good friend of mine on the swim team, and uh, she was pretty young. So uh, I just want to say God bless to her, and hopefully she rests in peace. So thank you. Thank you, Chair Colhub. Commissioner Brignardello. I would just like to announce uh, the Mikasa and Hale's third annual garage sale. Um, it is coming up on March 17th. And we will collect any donations that you have. And every all the donations, um, they include clothes, uh, books, games, toys, furniture, anything that can be sold that's in decent condition. We will come to your house and pick it up free of charge and take whatever you want uh, to give us uh, happily. And also, if you need any volunteer hours, uh, if you need community service hours or church hours or temple hours or whatever, kind of hours you need uh, you can contact me to be able to volunteer and you can contact me at 805-358-0002 
or Gabriella Brignardella at mikasaangeles.org, but that's kind of a long one, so just go with the phone number. So, uh, third annual garage sale. Be there. It's going to be a lot of fun. We had a lot of TVs and Xboxes and really cheap uh, PlayStation games and lots of cool stuff last year. So, thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Brignardella. Are there any more commissioner comments? Okay, thank you. All right, that wraps up most of our meeting. I just want to remind all the commissioners and all the reviewers that we have an implementation meeting next week, and it is in the Marvin Smith Community Room in the library, and it is at 6 o'clock, so be there or be square, and uh, we invite any member of the community that would like to come help out to go. And we have a new phone number for the Youth Commission. Youth Commission, uh, you can either email youthcommission at tox.org to get more information or call our brand new number, which is 805 381 7362. So you can call that new number, it's nice and new, so you can uh, come contact us. All right, so if you have any more information, please contact us there and please like our Facebook. We need people to like our Facebook, we need people to know who we are, so please like our Facebook again. And we have a, our next televised meeting will be next month, so tune in then. And this adjourns our January 4th meeting, and adjournment is at 7.27 p.m. Thank you.